Okay, so um, welcome, Sissy. So let's just um start up. Okay, if Mapu will join, they will join like in between. Either way, the, the recording will be available after the the um revision of the assignment, right? So um, good to have you all here. Um, Darlington, you can just start now. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I don't know if it's evening for everyone, but good day, everyone. Um, basically, what we're supposed to actually do today is uh, go over the assignments. So the reason the reason why we decided to hold the follow up class was um, we I went through the assignment and why week one was okay. The remaining weeks were not so impressive. Some persons complained um, the classes were too fast. Others complain that um the the um carrier syntax was too difficult and um they don't understand some stuff yet so that was the reason why we decided to hold the follow-up class so we could actually um get to talk one on one away from um the normal scheme probably attempt the assignment and um let's see if we can actually make progress with understanding how to write um better and more efficient Cairo. so um the I the 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 whole essence the idea I had I had for the class was that um we would probably go over the assignments right attempt the assignments do them together and um along the way if you have any question as regards to probably what we've thought thus far just um ask your questions and we would attempt to them so we'll be starting from the week two assignments and if there's time to we'll attempt the week three assignment so um. So without further ado, let's just um let's get started. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll just be sharing my screen. I'll share my screen now and so we could actually um do something. Okay, um Paul, if you are there, if you are there, I can't share my screen. Can you make me um make me e host so I or e co host so I can actually share screens? I just did, I just did. Sorry, man. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. All right, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Not this, not this, not this, not this. Okay, not this too. Um, I'm sorry. Stuff is really blocking my view. Uh, Um, sorry, I'm looking. Okay, yeah, see what I'm looking for. Let me move this guy. I don't know what's wrong with this. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, okay, yeah. So, um, basically, this is the assignment. I think this should be week two, right? Yeah, this is week two's assignment. And um, what we have to do, right, we're supposed to build a simple program that stores students' records, that the name, the age, the gender. And um, so we're given some certain project requirements that we needed, um, should I say, we um, needed your project to satisfy in order to pass. So we're told that your contract should have a storage variable, the admin address that stores an admin address. Your contract should have a storage variable, student details, and maps the student's address to your details. Um, okay, so we are going to like we're going to be building this out, right? Um, we're going to be doing it from scratch. And um, the whole idea is as we do it, please let's try to like follow up. Let's try to follow up. And if you have questions, just ask. So I'm just going to be starting a new. Let me find okay. Sorry. Um sorry. Um okay. Um okay, I'm just move this here to my terminal and just start off something. Okay. Yeah, so um as always we we'll start by in, um initializing a new proto style um folder or workspace, I don't know what it's called. So 
Can they actually be carrier projects? No, we don't want that. Uh, our direction, let's just call this week two. And um, yeah, so let's move into week two. Uh, so let's open this in our code editor. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's just delete. Okay, let's just leave that guy here. Let's just clear what's inside. Let's clear the contents. Um, I don't know. There's stuff in the top that's actually blocking my view, and I'm trying to see how they remove it. I can't figure it out. So I'll just move it to it down. Okay, so um, so as always, like we said earlier, if you are starting out with um a new Cairo. In your Cairo contract, right? You need to declare that it is um a Cairo contract, and we do that by specifying percentage land stack net. Then we need to import some certain stuffs. Um okay. First of all, we need to import um the uh the hash built in. We need to import the hash built in. And we would, what else would we probably need? Um, let me see the project requirement again. So it's say your contract to have a storage variable admin. So we won't be dealing with you in right? So I think that would be as much as we would need for now. Probably from the other team to probably import later. So um, our project is going to have certain storage variables, right? Certain storage variables. And um, the first storage variable we were asked to create is um is a storage variable called admin address and you should store the admin address. So let's create that. So call this admin address uh, and you should return an address which is of a type field. The second storage variable we actually create is more like a mapping that maps the student address to their details. And it's called student details, right? So let's create that to call this um, storage variable student details. And this maps like, um, what does it map again? It maps the student address to their details. So um, basically, we are going to make the details a struct, right? So, I would explain that why we should do that. I think that was giving us a hint. So we are going to make the student details um, to be a struct of type details. Now, the reason why we want to make the student details a struct is because from our um, project description, right, the student details is supposed to contain a name and age and a gender. So we know what the struct is, right? We use it, we can use it to create custom data types. So um we also give that as a hint here, right? So we said you can use a struct for student details. So that's what we are going to do. Now we're going to create the struct above. That's one, one thing you should always note. It's proper you create your struct above your storage variables. So um, we're going to create our structs, which is going to be called details. And uh, inside it, we are going to have a name, which is of type fields, an age, which is of type fields, and a gender, which is of type fields too. So this, um, this storage variable basically is of the data type details. Um, what else do we have to create? So the next thing we have to do is we should create, we have to create a constructor that takes in an address argument and initializes it as the admin. This is actually very simple. So um, for our constructor, right, we asked, um, we have to create, okay. I'm just going to do this because I don't have time to write that out, but this is really constructor. And uh, the name of this is supposed to be a constructor. So this constructor takes in an address argument, which is of type field too. And the whole idea is um, we are going to be initializing the admin 
while the contract is being deployed. So we know what a constructor is, right? It, the, it's um it's usually used, the function used to initialize um some certain parameters on deployment. So we are going to be initializing our admin address here. We're going to be writing to it and what we're going to be writing is the address. So um like we like we know right if you are um if you want to change the the content of a storage variable you write to it um and if you want to like get the content of a storage variable you read from it so we are going to write to this admin address storage variable and then we're going to return you must always return after as in, in a function call right you must always um return so next thing we need to do is um we need to have an external function called store details now this external function it takes in the name the age and the gender as arguments which should be stored in the student's detail storage variable now we're going to create this is going to be an okay let's just um i prefer segmenting my codes like this it makes your codes look better and more readable so um let's this is an external something. So we're going to call this, what was it called? It's called store details, right? So we're going to call this store details. And um, it takes in what? It takes in the, it takes in different parameters, name, age, and gender. So it takes in um, a name of type fields, of fields, and age of type fields, and um, gender of type fields. And we were asked to like, taking those informations and pass them as an argument to be stored in the student detail storage variable. Now, remember that the student um, detail storage variable, first of all, it gets the address of the person trying to store his details. Then next, it gets those informations the person, pass, the, the person passes in and then it um, stores it in a struct, in a struct as in, in a struct as in core details, right? So, what we are going to do is first of all we are going to get the address of um whosoever that is making that that is trying to call that function that's the address of the caller and to do that we are going to we're going to um say let's call her because like the get caller address okay so we need to import this right we need to import this that is a system call so we're going to see from stackware dot dot stacknet dot common those six calls we're going to import get caller address so um so we are going to get the caller address and we're going to store it in this caller temporary variable the next thing we want to do is we want to create um let's call this let, let's we're going to create a, a a um let's call this students student info right we're going to create a struct now this student info is going to be a struct as in of type details, details from above, right? And um, we're going to be passing in the arguments we, we our parameters, right? Name, age, gender. And that should be like in the same sequence as it is in our struct, name, age, gender. Now, after we've created this struct, right? The next thing we need to do is we are going to write to, um, we're now going to finally write our storage variable, which is the student details, right? We're going to write to student details. And the first parameter we are passing in is the key. The key is the address, that's the caller, the address of the caller. And the next um, parameter we are passing in is the struct, the details, the detail struct. So we are going to pass in caller. And we are going to pass in the student info. And once we are done, next thing we want to do is we want to return. As always, you must always return after a function call. And um, that's that should be about it. Then the last question says, um, okay, it says we should create a view function get name that takes in the student's address and returns the student's name. And this is like one that's a little tricky. So we are going to these ones are get us right so get us we are going to be creating a view function but um i'm going to have to use at external since that's the only thing my 
my um, VS Code extension text. So we're going to change this to a U function. And this is supposed to be get name. So the get name um, function is supposed to take in an address as a parameter. And um, it is supposed to return. So what we're going to, what we are going to do now is, so let's go back again. So you say, yeah, you, yeah, we have a view function get name, right? It takes in the student's address and then returns the student's name. So what we're going to do is we have an, the address supplied already. Now remember that the student's, um, the storage variable student details, it's a key to um, a key to a value mapping, right? So each time we supply the address, we should get the value, the associated value. So we already have the address, right? We already have the address passed in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's, um, okay, let's call the student info first. Let's first get the struct itself. Let's let info be equal to um, what's the name of the story driver, student details. So we're going to say student details, dot read and we're going to be passing in the key which is the address now after reading this um from the this should get the struct and store it in here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say let name be equal to students info dot name now student info returns a struct of details. Sorry, the student info has it contains a struct called the details, right? And that details contains um, different members, that's so the name, the age, and the gender. So we are going to be getting the name alone. And next thing we want to do is we want to return the name, the name that we got. We want to return the name. So let's just the name is equal to name, right? So over here, we were supposed to like do this. We're supposed to indicate that we are returning a name fail of that field. And um, I think this should let's let me be sure. Yeah, so we've gotten we've done our constructor, we've done our storage variables, our external function, and our view function. So next thing we need to do is to build like to compile our okay. The main not carry is already here, so we we'll need to compile that. So we're going to run proto star build. Okay, so our, our project has been. Next thing we want to do is we want to deploy this. We want to deploy this pro to start deploy. Um, we want to deploy the main JSON. And I always forget this, so I just have to go steal it from somewhere. Um. Uh, where's this guy? Where's this guy? Yeah. So uh, we need our gateway URL and our chain ID. Our gateway URL and our chain ID. So let's just copy that. Yeah. So um, let's just paste that. And then um, because we want to deploy to testnet two, and there's testnet two does not have. Um, the default support currently on Protostar. I don't know if you've included it with the latest updates. I'll probably confirm that. But for now, if you want to deploy to testnet 2, you'd have to submit the gateway URL and the chain ID. So, um, okay, so we it takes in um, a single input, right? That's the address. So I'm just going to like go copy a wallet address of mine. Let's just copy this guy here. And um, Let's just paste that. So let's try deploying that. Yeah, so um we've got our contracts deployed, right? Should take it um, take a little time to show up. So but let's go check it now on stack scan, right? So um, let's, um okay. Okay, guys, um, as we go on, if you have any questions at all, just you could probably just use the chat or the monitoring the charts. So let's check, um, let's check out our contracts. Okay, still not yet deployed, so we'll just have to wait a while. Just have to wait a while. So let me just check the charts. So, okay. Um Mm 
okay yeah our contract is deployed so let's just go to the right contract and let's connect our wallet now let's try storing our details okay there's a question why is the address passed in the constructor okay um basically it's um a requirement for the as as the um the assignment right we asked to initialize an admin address although in this particular contract i wouldn't say that that has um, like um a sufficient use case considering the admin is not like the person we don't we don't use the admin for any form of access control basically but you probably be building more complicated projects where you would need an administrator for the project as a particular address that is um assigned to carry out some specific duties so basically that address is something you want to initialize in a constructor because you wouldn't want any other person to be able to like initialize a random address as an admin so basically what we use a constructor to do right is to initialize certain parameters or certain storage variables as as in before deployment right before it is available to the public so i don't know if that um answers the question so he said okay could i use this uh to construct all this okay let admin address because to get caller address admin address the right admin address yeah yeah that works to so that that's basically the same thing we just um i think the only difference between mine and yours is um the fact that okay 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 well this no no you wouldn't want to use this the reason why i would say you don't use this right is because uh currently Although this will be changing in like very soon, this will be changing very soon. But currently, when you deploy contracts, right, you deploy them for free. So the address deploying your call, the contract is probably not your, it's definitely not your wallet address. You are not deploying it straight from like your agent wallet or your Bravo's wallet, right? So when you call get call address, it gets that random address and it initializes it as an admin. So why are we passing an address as um, a parameter is because we get the um, address, we copy the address from our wallet and we initialize our, our own address as the admin. But when you use the get caller, it initializes any whatsoever um, whatsoever wallet address, whatsoever this thing that is calling um, the the function, the deploy function is what initializes as um the admin. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so um okay, so let's pass, let's try storing um in detail. So my name is Darlington. Well, my age, let's just keep that. Let's just see. Let's just see 12, but that's not my age. Then gender. Mail, of course. Okay, well, we have to change this mail to um, we have to change. Sorry, we have to change all this to fields because it doesn't accept text. So let's let's just go over here and um, let's run um that Python script. It's user pi. Basically, we're going to see um um string to fields, string to fields. And um, let's pass in Darlington. And okay, this is the field representation of Darlington. This is what we're going to be using. Not this, so we're going to be using this. Then um, for mail, we're going to still be doing string to field uh, mail. And this is um, the field representation of mail. Yeah, so now we're going to write and it pops up and we are going to approve. So it this should take a while to like um this should take a while to like process, right? So but when it does, we'll try to get the name and see if it returns the LinkedIn. So um okay. Let's just wait at least a minute or so. Okay, Elvis says he can't see my screen. Is that same for everyone? Okay, Manilo says he sees. Elvis, uh, are you sure your network is okay?
Elvis, can you try probably going off and joining again? Okay, so um, basically, yeah. Okay, so basically, um, our contracts, sorry, the transaction has gone through, right? So this is the address. Was that the address? No. Yeah, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, so we're going to copy this address and we're going to try getting the name associated with the address. So we're just going to query that and check the text and you can see we got back Darlington, right? So that's, that alone satisfies the first assignment. This was not so difficult. I don't know why a lot of persons complained about not being to uh, being able to attempt it. Well, um, I think that satisfies the second assignment. I don't know if anyone has questions before we proceed. Any questions before we proceed? Okay. Um, Manolo, Elvis, CC. Elvis, can you see my screen? Okay, sorry, I'm no longer sharing my screen. Let me try sharing it again. Okay, guys. Um, okay, in the absence of no question, we're going to attempt the third week assignment. Let me just get that. Okay. Let me share my screen once again. Okay, um, can everyone see my screen now? Elvis, can you see my screen? Yes, I, I see, I see. Okay, 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 that's fine. Well, um, so this is the assignment for week three, right? So this was a little more complicated. This was a little more complicated, but um, I didn't really um, expect everyone to like. Okay, it was kind of overwhelming because some of us were yet to understand the syntax, but thank you for today. Yeah, sure, I, I understand that. No problem. You're welcome. So um, I think this was a little bit of an overstretch, and this assignment should have been divided into two weeks. But the issue, the basic issue we had was that we didn't really have enough time. So we had a lot to teach and we had to find a way to make sure that everything entered the, um, the seven weeks. And um, I wasn't really expecting that um, everyone would get this completely, but I was so sad that we had just a single person attempting it. Um, that was not so nice at all. That was not so nice at all. So we are going to be attempting, we're going to be trying building this from like building the whole stuff from scratch, right? And um, hopefully by the end of the class, you should be able to do something, okay? So the first thing we asked to do, right, is we were asked to create an ERC20 token. We named StackNet Africa, symbol SAF, and a total supply of 10,000 using OpenZeppelin's library. So it says your token should match the ERC20 standard containing the core functions specified in OpenZeppelin's ERC20 library interface. Okay. And
So can you guys still hear me or have Zoom kicked me? I think my network has gone bad again. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, I see. All right, all right, all right. Thanks. Okay, so um basically the first thing we 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 asked to do, right? This is the interface for Open Zeppelin's ERC20 contract. So the first thing we asked to do is um we asked to create an ERC20 token with um okay. Okay, we asked to create an ERC20 token with the name Stacknet Africa, symbol SEF, and it's a supply of 10,000. So um first thing first, let's just let's just go back. Okay. Let's go back to week week two. And um I think I'll just join, although this was named week two, which I'll probably re rename later, but let's just um let's just move into our VS code. There's only creating a whole as in totally new stores, right? And um I'm going to create a folder first where we're going to keep the interfaces because um we learned about interfaces in week three, right? And we're going to be needing to like interact with our ERC20 contracts when we are building our pre-sale contract. So let's just go there and copy this guy and paste into our interface. So I'm going to create a file a um a new a new file which we're going to call ERC20.cairo. And inside here, we are going to be pasting our contract interface. That's the first thing. Then the second thing we are going to be doing is we're going to be creating. Um, sorry, let me let me segment this so it should be easier to understand. I'm going to call this week two, and I'm going to move this guy into that week two folder. Okay. Then I'm going to create a new folder called week three. And I'm going to move the interfaces folder into the week tree. So in case I push it, it will be easier for you to understand this. And inside week tree, we want to create um a new file, ers20.cairo. We are going to build our ers20 token. Then um the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our put style thumbnail and let's rename this so slash week to slash main.cairo. Then back to our ERC twenty dot Cairo contract. So we um basically to build this, we would need the um, Open Zeppelin's library because um would need this library to like build this out. So um normally you can actually there's a command to install as in to install Open Zeppelin's library. I think you'll find the command in um in the proto start docs, but I'm just going to copy and paste um the lib folder I have from one of my projects, right? Let me just um not this. Let me just copy the lib folder. The lib folder contains the um open zeppelin Cairo contracts. So I'm just going to copy and paste that because I don't have so much time to start um not this. A week two okay let's just paste this here okay so now we have inside the library you have the Cairo contract which contains um the open zeppelin source code so if you go into here go into tokens go into erc20 into library.cairo you find um our library contracts okay let's just do this so it doesn't pull off when i open a new file well so inside here we have um the open zeppelin library erc20 um cairo contracts it's like a library you can just import the functions and set stuff so next thing we are going to do is let's close this guy okay this is the library this is the interface and um inside this interface we have different um these are the different should i say different functions we need to we need to create right. We have the name function, the symbol function, the decimals function, the total supply, the balance of the allowance, the transfer, and the transfer from. So um let's get started with our token first. So let's call this stacknet. And from here, we want to import first thing first the built-in, right? Those Cairo built-ins. 
Okay, no, this is not correct. Let's come on. Let's carry built-ins. And I want to import the hash built-in. Then from here to we want to import okay, stack where dot Cairo dot common dot you don't need to have this by heart too. You can actually trace that by going back to the um the Cairo Lang library and just you can track it from here. So Cairo common you in 256. That's why I wrote Cairo common you in 256. So um, basically, everything is inside an abstracted library, an abstracted folder called Stackway that comes to Protostar. So from here, we want to import, we want to import some specific commands. So probably import the U256. Then lastly, um, okay, let's um from stackway.skyro, no the stacknet dot common dot syscalls. We want to import the get the get call address and the get contract address. We might not use this, but let's just import these guys. Then what else would we need to import? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, okay, let's just let's just move on. So um, first thing first, going to the um ERC twenty library. We don't need all this. We would need a constructor that initializes our contract. And this constructor is supposed to take in different parameters, which are going to pass the initializer function, the name, the symbol, and the decimals. So we are going to um, start with our constructor. And this should take, um, let's call this, we can just get that, and then we can rename this to constructor. Is a constructor function. I need to take in the name, which is of type field. You should take in the symbol, which is of type field too. You should take in the decimals, which is of, of type field. It's going to also take in some other stores like the total supply. Um, yeah, it's okay. Let's call this the total supply, which is going to be of type U two six. And lastly, we want to take in um is there another T1? Okay, yeah. I'm going to take in the owner, the person who would be minting the tokens to. And this is all going to be of type fields. So um the first First is as you can see here, I was a 20 namespace. So for example, if we want to refer to the initializer function, what we, what we simply need to do is okay, yeah. Um, um basically we're also supposed to like um import that library, this library dot Cairo, and we would get it from lib. Okay, okay, let's just from Cairo contracts. Um dot um Cairo contract inside source dot open zeppelin dot inside the um, token and inside ERC20. We want to import the ERC20, just the ERC20 namespace. Now, automatically, when we import the ERC20 namespace, we import every single function con um, contained inside the namespace. So, having done that, we can now do something as simple as um, ERC20 dot initializer. Now we're calling the initializer function, and the initializer function takes in it take, takes in the name, the symbol, and the decimals. So we're going to be passing that in. We're going to pass in the name, the symbol, and the decimal. Decimals. Yeah, that's one to so initialize in ERC20. Secondly, that ERC20 that we've initialized. We would want to mint it. So let's go back to library.cairo. And somewhere there should be a mint function that means new tokens to 
yeah, the means function. This is an internal function. We don't, I don't think we are looking for an internal function, are we? All right, it's actually an internal function. So, so it's, it's, yeah, we want to call the means function and we are going to be passing in a recipient and an amount. So let's just quickly rename this guy here to recipient. Recipient. And we're going to pass in, we're going to call the means function. And we're going to be minting to the recipients. What I'm going to be minting to the recipients and a certain amount of tokens, right? So we're going to be minting to the recipients, the total supply that will be supplying. We're going to be minting to the recipient, the total supply. And I think having done that, we've initialized the new yes 20 token and we've minted the token. Now we need to return. Okay. So just like in JavaScript that is dynamically typed, short in Cairo dynamically assigns a variable, the value type it is meant to hold, assigns a variable, the value type it's meant to hold. I don't get that. Can you just unmute your mic and throw more light on your question? Hello, Sissy, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Umba. And you name it and then assign it as a field. So, like, what tells that? Is it the field that tells the variable that it's meant to hold a number, like an integer in this case? Okay, well, um, okay, I think I get what you're saying. Well, in, um, in Cairo, basically, we do not have we do not have integers, we do not have strings, we do not have most of all those data types that comes with most programming languages you are used to. Um, Kairi, the way Kairi was programmed, right, the way Kairi was created, it just has a single data type that's called a field. Now, a field is um, a data type of um, 251 bits. So basically, um, we can actually create a uint, a uint 256 integer, that's a uint 256 data type out of a field. But then because um, a uint 256 is of 256 bits, but a field is of 251 bits, right? In order to create a unit of six out of um, a field, we had we now have to use a struct that contains, as in two fields. The first field is what we call a low, and the second field is what we call a high. So basically, a unit of six is created out of a field, but those are just the two data types that exist. So basically, the field does not automatically assign anything. But using some specific Python libraries, you can actually convert a field to an integer. You can convert a field to a string. You can convert a field to any data type you want to convert it to. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, Sissy, does that answer your question? I can't hear you. Um, yes, it's okay. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. So let me go back to share my screen. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so just going forward from where we stopped, right? After creating our constructor, we're going to be following our interface. We want to create every, we want our ERC20 token to have every single interface implemented here. So next thing we want to do is we want to create um, our getters, right? We're going to be starting from our getters. So the first getter, the first getter we have here, the getter function we have here is our name. So basically, um, as always, I'll just use the external in order to get all this call syntax those that are usually frustrating to write out. You know? This is going to be called, this is called, um, let, me, let me confirm, this is called name function, right? So basically it takes in no arguments. This takes in no arguments, but it returns a failed name. Okay, Manolo says he can't hear me. Um, is my network that bad? Can you guys hear me? Yes, 
Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right, okay, okay, no problem. So, um, uh, we want to we want to create a function name, right? Now we'll go back to our library and look for the name function. Um, just to check check it, so we can see our name function here, right? And it returns the ers twenty. You don't um the the name of the ERC twenty token. So, however, this is implemented is not our business. That's why it's a library. What we're going to do is we're just going to import the name function from the library, and we are going to say ERC twenty dot name. So we are reading from it. So this returns something, right? So we're going to say. Let's um name be equal to yes 20 dot name and we can simply just return the name. Um a better way to do this, right? Is just is just to go forward and just see return yes 20 dot name. You should automatically return whatever value that the yes 20 dot name function actually recalls. If someone says Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's for the view function name. So the next view function we want to implement. Let's just use the external. Then let's switch back to view. We want to implement the symbol function. And this two takes takes in no arguments, but it returns a field called symbol. And um. So over here, we're just going to return ers20 dot symbol. The next up, we are going to create another view function. Another view function, okay. We're going to create another view function. And this is going to be what? Next view function is the decimals. So this is simply going to be decimals. Right, right, writing this stuff is actually a lot of stress. So we're going to just do this and call this view, then call this decimals. And um, basically also don't, doesn't take an argument, but it returns the decimals in fields, right? So what we are simply going to do is return ERS twenty dot decimals, right? So, I hope we are actually following. So, if you have any questions, please don't feel to ask. So, the next interface function we are going to be um, implementing is the total supply function. So, this is also a view function. So we're going to just start with the external text now. And need to view. And um, this is this is the total supply. Also takes in arguments, but returns the total the total supply, which is of the type fields. Now we're going to come over here, and we're going to also return ERC twenty dot um, total. Let me confirm from the library total total, total supply that's how it's named total supply so i'm going to return this then what else was the next interface next interface is the balance of function so we're just going to come over here and um, implement that too which is a view function we're going to call this balance of and now this takes in um this takes in an argument, right? That's the account we are trying to query for. So we're going to call this the account, which is of the type field. And it returns, I think, a balance of type units of six. Yeah. So it returns a balance of um type units of six. So we're going to come over here. I want to do is we want to read the balance. Um, of um, the balance of live of the ERC20 function. So this is the balance of, so we're going to simply say ERC20 dot balance of, of balance of, and uh, we are going to be reading the balance of this account. And we're going to be returning that balance. 
when it's returning that balance. The next thing we want to do is um, design a question or chart. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is um, um let's see if we are done. Okay. Yeah. The next steps we have to do they are all external. Okay. The other ones. The other ones is the last getter function. So that's also let's just run that as that's also a view function. And it's called allowance. So basically, the allowance takes in how many arguments? It takes into the owner the spender. So it takes in the owner, which is of type field, the spender, which is of type field two. And what it basically does is it wants to read the remaining balance. So we're going to say let the remaining. Okay, so sorry, it also returns the remaining. Which should be of type u into six. So, what to say let remaining be equal to erc20 dot? Let's confirm if it's called allowance. Yeah, dot allowance, right? And in here, I want to pass in the owner and the spender. So, um, I'm actually doing this with the assumption we all know. What um we all understand the ERC twenty token interface and how it works. Um, so I I don't think we have so much time to be going over um over how the ERC twenty standard works. So basically, if you don't understand it, let me just send you a link to the EIP so you can actually read more on how the ERC twenty interface works. So um ERC twenty EIP. Just in case you don't understand, just go through this EIP and you should get the hang of um, how it works basically. Okay, um, I'm trying to find the charts. Okay, yep. You can just go through that in case you don't understand how the ERC20 interface works. Now let's go back to writing codes too. I think by now we are done with our getter functions. We are going to move over to our external functions. So coming here, we're going to go over our external functions, like externals. And um, firstly, we have the first external function, which is called what? Transfer, transfer, the transfer external function. Now this transfer external function takes in the recipients and the amounts. It takes in the recipients, which is of type fields, and the amount, which, okay, sorry. The amount, which is of type U into six. Does it return anything? Yeah, it returns success field, so. I'm going to just return sources. Um, Built. And to do this, to do this success thing, right? We're just going to import. Um, I can't remember the exact library. The presets, not this. Um, the introspection, not this. Security, not this. Not definitely not assets accounts. Okay, please a minute. Let me let me find something. So cool. oh, yeah, utils it should be utils. Uh still not in utils. Uh okay, where can I find this guy? Um I can't remember exactly, but we need that. Uh, we need that, we need that, we need that, we need that. Definitely, definitely not here. Not possible, not initializable, no re-entrance, so not security. Okay, guys, um, let me just run through um probably any implementation I've done on GitHub. Okay. Yeah, so now this is what I was looking to. Okay, from Cairo.com on oh, it's actually Cairo library. This is what I was looking for, actually. 
So let's just move over. So, okay. So of course, let's import this, right? So basically that two represents one, false represents zero. So in case our transfer goes through, we want to re um, return a one, which means true, right? So um, we are going to call the ERC20 the transfer, right? ERC20 the transfer. And we're going to pass in the recipient and the amount. So I'm going to be passing in the recipients and the amounts. And um, if it goes through, we want to return true. Want to return true. Yeah, want to return true. Then we move over to our next external function, which is um the transfer from. Um, okay. The transfer from, and it takes in what the sender, a recipient, and the amount. The sender, which should be of type field, the recipient, which should be of type field, and the amount, which should be of type U in 56. So basically, we want to just call the ERC20 dot transfer from. Passing in the sender, the recipients, and the amounts. Uh, and if it goes to one, we told true, which means it was successful. Then next up, we want to um, go back to the next. Next up is what? Next up is the approve function, which is also the last. So the approve function takes in, okay, this is actually supposed to return, I think it's sources. Which is, which is a failed value too. Yeah, then we have the approve function which takes in the spender and the amount. The spender failed and the amount, which is a unit 256. And um, we are simply going to return the sources also, which is going to be a failed value. And over here, we want to call the ERC20 that's approved, ERC20 that's approved function. And in here, I want to pass in the spender, I want to pass in the amount. And if it goes true, as always, we want to return true. Yeah. So this should wrap up our ERC20 token. So basically, the the logic, the whole logic has been abstracted, implemented by Open Zeppelin. And your, your duty is just to import the library and basically use the, um, the functions from the namespaces. So now let's save this and see if it builds up. So we're going to go to our postal terminal and we're going to add this up. See, ERS20 is equal to as the source slash slash week two slash um slash what slash three slash so slash week three right let me confirm let's clean this guy yeah slash week three slash e r is the 20 not Cairo yeah now let's try building and see what we get Oh, well, we run into errors. Basically, it can't find our imports. Okay. Let's go. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, so basically, we have Cairo contracts. And in here, in Cairo contracts, we have source. In source, we have open Zeppelin, which has token, which has ERC20. Oh, then inside the ERC20, we have the library, which we want to import those stuff from. So let's try building once again. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's just move this guy. So uh, it says failed to execute scripts due to unharm could not find module, carry contract source open the plane, search in the following. Oh god, this wants to start frustrating me. Kyle contracts ERC20 library. Okay, I think I imported that from somewhere, right? So let me see how I've done that previously. Import previously. Let's just copy that. Okay. Oh, right. I think I know where that's it is a change that came from. Okay. Sorry, how were you able to figure out it was an import error? Okay. Yeah, you could actually, um, it was actually stated in, process actually stated it there, right? So as you can see here, it says could not find module, Kyle contract source open Zeppelin. It, it couldn't find what we are trying to import. Um, I understand why I can't find it. I think I just updated my Cairo to 0.8.1 recently. And I think with this, when you do this right, you were expected to add a Cairo path, okay? Yeah, so we, we're supposed to add the Cairo parts. Um, uh, I don't think this is correct. So let me just look for the release and check it out. Releases, protester. Let's just go over here. Let's check out the So with version 0. I don't even think with version 0. 0.8.0, each time you. um. If you have like you have stuffs in your library which you are trying to import from probably external dependencies, you must actually add a Cairo path for processors to be able to figure out where your dependencies are. So we are going to add a Cairo path, which is um lib. Okay. So let's That fixes our issue. Under error, it says unknown identifier ERC20, unknown identifier ERC20. Dots, okay, let's go back. So, go over, go over here. The error comes from what line? Transfer from 78. So, let's go see what's wrong. Okay, let's go over to our library and see our transfer. Um, so what's wrong exactly? Yes, twenty dot transfer underscore from. Now what's wrong with that? Import yes twenty. Yes twenty dot transfer from, and it says. Can this stop, stop blocking my way? It says, protester couldn't compile ERC20 contract slash users or Kairos, okay, with two slash with three slash, okay. Unknown identifier ERC20 dot. Okay, why is that unknown? Meanwhile, I'd imported it earlier. Let's just go over to the library. This is the namespace we are trying to import, the ERC20 namespace. Oh, am I missing something? So we are trying to import the ERC20 namespace. ERC20, okay. Symbol to tell supply this mouse transfer, transfer from. It doesn't look like an error from there, so let's try to see what's wrong. Okay, what I'm going to do is let's let's main this first and let's be sure we get um without running to another error. Let me see if it doesn't detect the ERS20 globally. So cannot convert to the return type of total supply. Okay. Okay, I think I get why that is in an error. This is supposed to be in 256. Yeah, that's supposed to be in 256. But then I still can't get why this is in an error. 
um ERC twenty ERC twenty dot transfer from okay. Okay, so I think that's fixed. So you say function must end with a return instruction or a jump. Oh my bad. That's for allowance function. We're actually supposed to return remaining. It's always normal to run into errors like this when writing codes. Just up to you to find where your problems are coming from and try to debug them. So let's try building once again. Yeah, finally, it works now. So let's just clear this. Sorry, someone has a question. Um, yes. Okay. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Does this mean you must you must return something in a function before it compiles? You said most of Must you return something in a function before it can out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every function must have a return value. Even if it doesn't have to return something, it can return an empty value to just like it does in the constructor. But every function must end with a return statement. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we want to deploy um, the build ERC, the ERC20 um, contract. So um, as always, I'm just going to go copy that whole network thing. That's actually giving me issues. I hope uh, Protostar helps us fix that. So I'm just going to copy this, the gateway URL and the chain ID. I'm going to paste that. Then our inputs is where things get tricky. So the first thing inputs we have here is our name. And um, our projects, sorry, our projects, our projects, our projects, our projects, our projects, where are you? So we were asked to name our ERC20 token as Stacknet Africa and the symbol as SAF. So we're just going to go into um, assess, okay? What's going to happen is, in fact, rather than do this, I'm just going to copy the file. I'm just let me look for some we have done it previously and just copy and paste. You don't need to write the Python script yourself. So I literally started copying it right from the beginning. And I think every other single person copies it. So we don't know, probably came from the stack team, but you just don't need to know that too. So, okay. Um, let me see if this has it. Yeah, this has it, the utils of pi. So we're just going to copy this. And we're going to go back to our project. Let's close this thing. It's just to, yeah. And we're going to create a utils of pi. And we are simply going to paste all those. Now we're going to go back to our terminal. Be sure so you can needs to be updated. This app will not work with future version of that. Okay, no problem. No problem. No problem. So um yeah, while this Let's just let's just copy this because we we'll have to clear it. Let's just copy that because we we'll have to clear it. Now um we're going to run. Well, we're going to run the scripts that we just created. Utils.py. I want to, what we want to do basically is we want to we want to convert string to fields. I want to convert stacknet Africa. Stacknet Africa. To string next, we want to convert um SEF that's the name of the symbol to string two, and I think that's just what we need to convert. Now we're going to close this and we're going to try running this once again. So yeah. So our inputs, our first input, right? The first input is name. Let's go to our uh, strength.chiro. The name, the symbol, then decimals, the total supply. 
So let's go over here. Okay. Not this. Okay. Can't hear him. Am I alone in this? Okay, guys, can you hear me? Uh CC says he can't hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, then yeah so um for the inputs uh the first thing we want to paste is uh, our name right our name is Tacnet africa so we're going to paste the the felt the felt conversion then our symbol is next which is this south then our decimals which is going to be 18 which is a unit of six. So when you rep represent it in two, unit two of six, basically, you use two fields. The low is our main decimal, which is 18, and the, the second is represented using a zero. And um, next up, we what else do we need? Does the total supply and the recipient. Okay, no, our decimals is a field. Our decimals is a field. Our decimals is a field. So we are going to go in here. And just remove that zero. So our total supply is supposed to be ten thousand. Our, our total supply is going to be ten thousand. And lastly, I think the last thing we need is what after the total supply is the recipient. So the recipient is going to be um this wallet address is going to be the recipient. So I'm just going to piece that in. And okay, um, guys, can you still hear me? Can you guys still hear me? I just want to confirm. Yes, I can hear you now, but there was a time I could not. All right, all right, all right. Okay, no problem. So let's just proceed to. Um, we've deployed our contract. We've deployed our yes, 20 token contract. So let's just go check it out. So we are going to search for it over here. And I apologize for the background noise. Um, I don't know if it goes in here. So this is our contract, right? If we query our name, guys, yeah, sorry, I had to, I had to reload again. I'm not sure if that was my answer, but let's just, let's just do this once again. Okay, so let's go to the read contract, right? And if you query for the name, you get the text "Stockmate Africa." If you query for the symbol, you get our symbol, which is SAF. And if you query for the total supply. I was just taking this. Hey guys, I apologize. It's a bit messy. Okay, yeah, it shows up 18 and 10,000. So uh, we are already out of time. So let's just hurry. So um, basically, you can also transfer tokens from one wallet to another. You can transfer from, you can approve. So we just completed our ERC20 token contract. We've completed our ERC20 token contract and we have deployed it. Then next up, we need to work on our pre-sale contract. So let's go over, go back to our assignment once again. And um, as you can see here, we've done the num the first one. We've completed the first one. You see.
is created and he has returned to the code named Tacni Africa, which we have. And he also marks, we also made it match open. We are asked to create a simple whitelist pre sale contract that allows only a registered address claim the Tacni Africa token. Now, this is a bit more, more complex. And um, with the short amount of time we have, I'm not sure we'll be able to like we'll be able to write everything from scratch and get it through. But what's going to happen is, um, I think I created a solution earlier, and we're just going to copy and paste our solution now into this this particular repo, and um, and I'm going to like, I'm going to um, I'm going to properly explain what I did, and I'm going to also send the link to the to the both repo so um. You can actually check them out later. So uh, I think let's, let's just go back to let's go back to the repositories. I'm going just going to drop the link in the chat now. So I think this is for it. They will retrieve it back, and we are going to go over the pre-sale contracts. Now let's just copy this guy, and I'll try my best to explain it. That we are going to try to deploy it and interact with it. So let's just create the pre sale, pre sale dot Cairo. Okay. Now, in here, we're going to just paste the whole contract. Now, this the whole idea of this now is um, we are looking to create a pre sale contract. A pre sale is like an ICO where um, a certain amount of the token is sold to like um, some specific set of persons, probably before the token is listed or maybe a decentralized exchange or something. So um, we just created a pre simple pre sale token in Cairo. And we for, we tried as much as possible to follow the guidelines we were given. So um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to minimize this guy, uh, which doesn't seem like a good idea because it doesn't fold in. So, okay, we we'll just tried to, I wanted to do it side by side, but there's no problem, let's just move on. So um, the project description, so, uh, it says that the thought process of this application is we want to let users claim our deployed token, but before they claim the token, they first need to register with a sum of 0.001 ETH. So the contract should also store the addresses after claiming so they can't claim again. So we don't want we don't want a double spending, as in we don't want our contract to be vulnerable to double spending. That's one the reason why we need to store the addresses after claiming. So people can claim again. Now, our project requirement says that the first thing our project needs to do says it should have a storage variable called admin address to store the address of the contract admin. So the contract admin is going to be responsible for a few things. One of them mainly is holding the um the tokens that we would be um dispatching, right? The amount of this so it's certain of lot of tokens will be dispatching to pre-sale buyers. So we start with creating some certain constants. So we have to, we we are going to be interacting with the each contract. We are going to be interacting with the main each contract on StackNet. And because of that, we needed to create a constant to hold the, the contract address for the each contract. And then our registration price is this, right? Our registration price is um is set to our registration price set to be 0.001 each. So we represent it in way here. We represent it in way just to confirm. If you confirm, convert this, let's look for those way to eight converters. Way to eight converter. Let's see the source. Yeah, so if you paste this in, you'll see that it gives us 0.001 eta. So that's what we just did here. So this is the representation of um, 0.001 eta in we. Now we now move over to our storage variable. So what does our project description say? So the first thing it says is you should have a storage variable called admin address to store the address of the contract admin. So we have that here, the um, storage variable, the admin address, which stores the contract of the admin. The next thing it says is um, 
you should have a storage mapping, a storage mapping registered address to um, mapping the registered address of an address to its status, okay? So basically what this does, it maps an address to the status of whether it has registered or not. And the status is going to be a bool value, which is either zero or one, which indicates whether or not an address is registered. Mm -hmm. So we have that here, the storage value registered address, as an address which is mapped to a status. So this is used to track addresses that have registered and addresses that have no registered, which is going to be used, we are going to be using for access control later on. The next last thing we have is um, a mapping of claimed address, which maps address to status to check whether an address has claimed certain tokens or not. So um, basically we, we use this, like I said earlier, to prevent double spending. So once an address is claims, claims certain amounts of token, we ensure that we add that address to like, we update the status of that address to one to ensure it can't claim again. Then the last thing we added here, which I forgot to put in the project description, was the token address, which we want to store the address of the token will be creating an ICO for. And um, you can also do that using, let's say constant, you can just come here and probably create a constant token and maybe store the address if you want. But the reason why I did it this way is so that the contract is dynamic and can work for different addresses, different, different tokens at all. You just need to supply the token address of um, whatsoever token you want to like create the, create the pre-sale for. So, um, then the next thing we now do is we initialize our constructor or anything said about the constructor. So we say, yeah, we should have a constructor where the admin address and the StackNet Africa deployed tokens address is initialized. So over here, we have the constructor where we initialize our admin address. And we also initialize the token address of um, the StackNet Africa token. Having done that, we now move over to our functions, our external function. So the first external function we have here is the register function. Now, what this function is supposed to do is like um, any user, any person at all who wants to participate in the pre-sale can register using this function. So basically, you, um, to register rights, let's go over the project description again. Let's not just switch some out. So, to register, the user needs to send in a certain amount of it. And as such, the register function should accept it to register users. And you should store the address, the registered address storage variable with a status of one, meaning that the, the address, this particular address has registered for the pre-sale, right? So the first thing we did here is we added an alloc lookhouse keyword. And the reason why we had to add this was because we initialize a lot of variables at the top. And without this alloc locales, you can't assess these variables, probably maybe after a certain logic or certain execution or something. If we try assess, let's say this alloc locales was done here, and we try ass assessing maybe something like um, this contract from this place, from this place here, the, re the reference will be revoked before it gets here. We talked about ref revoked references in week three and week four, right? So, the reference will be revoked before we get here. And that is why we have to add the alloc locales keyword to tell Cairo that please don't revoke our temporary variables. So the next thing we have to do is we added um we added a check. We want to ensure, think of it as a use a type of user authentication, right? We want to ensure that the user is not already registered. We don't want any user registering twice. So we start with the with attributes keyword, right? And um, the ICO says the um, error we want to return is you have already registered. You have already registered. That's if the user is already registered. Now this is how we check if the user is already registered. We, we query the registration status, like that's the registered address storage variable passing in the call address. Remember the call address, we got, we got it using the get call address, right? So we want to query this registration status using this get call address as the caller. Next thing, we want to assert that the registration status, that's whatever we get, we want to assert is equal to zero. 
If it is not equal to zero, this error will be true. So basically, how the with attributes error message works is it checks that the assert statements contained within these brackets, as in a true, that it, it, it asserts to a true condition. If it doesn't assert to a true condition, it throws, it throws up an error, it throws up an error. So next thing, we want to check that the user has beforehand approved the address of the ICO contract to spend the registration amount from his its balance. So to do that, we would call the approve function, trying to check the allowance. So basically, um, if you understand the way, um, this is also very common with Solidity too, right? So the way the transfer from function of um, the ES20 token standard works, right? For let's say, now this contract, our contract now want to call the transfer from on a user's wallet. Before a, um, the contract can spend the Ethereum in a, the user's wallet, that's the, the caller's wallet, right? The user needs to approve that certain amount of ether to be spent by the contract. So basically, before you try registering, you need to head over to the official Ethereum contract on StackNet and approve our contract address to spend at least 0.001 ETH. So basically, we want to um, put in a check to ensure because sometimes if there's no check, we just get thrown a random error, not knowing why the error was thrown. So we want to put in a check. So this check now ensures that beforehand, this um, user has approved the ICO contract, that's the pre-sale contract, to spend the registration amount from its ETH balance. And to do that, like I said, we'll we call the allowance, um, the allowance function on the ETH contract. The ETH contract, remember we, we added it as a constant earlier. And if you remember how the way, if you remember the way interfaces work, right? To like um call a certain interface. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah, to call a certain interface, you must supply the address of the contract you are trying to interact with. So we the contract we are trying to interact with is the ETH contract. And um this um the, the person who is trying to approve that the sender is the caller. And the person where the recipient, the person we are trying to approve is um the this is this contract, like the contract address of um the pre-sale. So um when we get we're going to get the amount, and now we are going to use a check. We're going to use the unit of six sign non-negative less than equals forget all this big grammar. Basically, what it does is it checks that um the reg price in units. The reg price in units is um we get this reg price and basically convert it to a units value as you can see here we just I'm um, create a unit with strict stroke the reg price zero I want to check that this registration price is less than the approved this thing so if it is less than it means that our contract our pre-sale contract is approved to spend that particular amount but if it is less than like if um if as in the approved amount is zero or is less than the registration price, the contract will fail. So now I want to assert that the less than is equal to one. So if you understand, just check up this later. We don't have much time, but check up this later in the Cairo library. You would find it in um you find it in um in Cairo Common U in 256. So just check it out later. You'll see that if um it compares the two values, and if the first value is lesser than the second value, if the first value, this is lesser than the second value, it will return a one. So we want to assert that it return the one. If it, has, if it returns a one, then we can proceed to do other things. But if it doesn't return a one, we'll throw an error that says you need to approve at least 0.001 it for registration. Now, the last, the um, second, next thing we need to do is we want to transfer the registration price from the caller to the ICO contract address. Now, this is the reason why we needed to approve the pre sale contract to spend the registration amount. Now, we are going to call the transfer from, uh, from function on the each contract. And um, the sender is the caller, that's the person calling, trying to register. The, um, the spender is this contract, that's the pre sale contract. And the amount being spent, that's the rece recipient, sorry, is this contract. Then the amount being received is the reg price in units. So once we can make the transfer, 
basically what we are doing is we are extracting the money from the user's wallet into the pre-sale contract. Once that is successful, the last thing we need to do is to register the address. So to register the address, basically we pick in the address and we write it to the registered address mapping with um, a value of one, meaning that it has registered. Once we do that, we have successfully completed our registration function. If you don't understand anything, just use the chat box and I'll do my best to explain. Because we are really running out of time, let me rush through the um, claim functions because I want us to like get a grasp so of like, we'll try to interact with this, we'll try to register and we'll try to claim. And I believe that by the time we've done this, we understand how this works generally. And um, I proposed fully did not close as in receiving, um, Okay, let's let me just let me confirm. Let me confirm before I see what I'm not sure, of, right? So if you can see, yeah, I didn't close it. I didn't close it. As you can see, you can still submit um submit your answers. You can still fill the week three feedback and assessment for because if you check here, you can see that we have we had just one person doing the assignment, and that was not nice because. Some persons have already missed two assignments and one more miss and you would definitely not graduate. And we are interested in seeing a lot of persons graduate and go to. So um, please try to like, after we are done with the class, I'm going to permit us, although it's not supposed to be like that, I'm still going to permit us to go through it again and try to build this yourself. And I'm, 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 and I'm placing emphasis on building this yourself because if you probably copy my codes, the codes is available on my GitHub repo. It's not something I'm hiding. You can actually check it out. Even send the links later after we are done. But if you copy and paste, you just copy my codes directly and you paste. I would assume you didn't understand everything we did today and you would get a feel. So please, as much as possible, try to understand this and write it yourself. Now on back to our codes. So the next thing we have is the claim function, right? The external function claim. Now to claim, we need to provide the address, the address, the registered address. Now you want to claim, you want to claim a certain, as in if you registered, you should be able to claim a certain amount, the amount that is dispersed, right? Let's just go back to our description and see what it says, our project description. So the project description says it should have a claim function that takes in an address argument, check if check checks if it's a registered address, then it disperses 20 tokens to that address. And finally, adds it to the claimed address variable with the status of one. So if you registered, we are going to be sending you 20 tokens. So the first thing we need to do is we want to get the value of the address. So first of all, we pass in an address, the address that we claim is registered. Now I want to check if it's truly registered. So first thing we do is we, we, we check the status, is registered, check where you return it. Without returning zero or one, depending on if the address is registered. Now I want to check that the caller is registered. And to do that, we just, we use the with attribute error message, right? And we pass in an assert statement that checks that, that checks that it's registered is equal to one. Now, if this is equal to zero, it will throw an error that says, you are not eligible for this ICO. Next up, we want to check that the caller has not already claimed to prevent double spending. So we have the, the claimed address, we take in an address and returns the status, right? So we're going to come over here and we're going to check. First of all, we're going to get the claim status, right? It's return is zero and one. I want to assert that the claim status is equal to zero, meaning it hasn't registered, it hasn't claimed the tokens yet. So but if the claim status is equal to one, is to throw an error that says you have already claimed your tokens. So the next thing we want to do now is we want to transfer the claim, claimed amount to the user. To do that, we want to change the claim amount to a unit of six since um, ERC20 library works with um, the unit of six. So we're going to change that to a unit of six. Then we, are, we got our contract address because we'll be needing it. The token address, the admin address, we'll be needing all that. Then the transfer from, the token address is um, what was saved initially. We saved that in the constructor area. The admin address was also saved initially. Like I told you, the admin address is what holds the funds. Then we have the address, that's the address we are sending the 20 tokens to. Then the claim amount is 20, that's the 20 tokens. 
Once we have done that, the last thing we need to do is to add the caller to the list of claimed address. And to do that, we do claimed address the right address one. So basically, we add it to the list of claimed address to ensure that the user cannot double spend, that the user cannot reclaim. Then lastly, we return. Now, I added an extra because I realized that um, the project did not have any view function. I did it intentionally because the whole stuff was already looking too bulky for week three, so I didn't want to um, add more stress. So basically, by adding a little view function here, so what it just does is to check if a particular address is registered, and it's actually very simple. It just checks the registration status and returns the status. Now, next thing we are going to be doing, if you don't understand anything, please just indicate in the chat and I'll do my best to explain. So now let's deploy this contract and let's try interacting with it. So let's see if it's Go to our putter stuff file and let's add it here. Um, okay. Resume. Is equal to source slash um retrieve slash um presale presale dot Cairo. Now let's try building first. Well, we run into an error from source to interfaces. Oh, right. That's the problem with copying and pasting. We just we we'll just want to go source dot week three dot interfaces. Perfect. Our contract has built. Now let's try deploying. So I'm going to run the protostar deploy command. And um, we're trying to deploy the build slash um slash pre-sale addition. Okay, sorry. Uh, let me copy that uh, once again. I keep copying. So let's just copy this. Okay. Oh, this is an issue. Sorry. I just click this guy. Yep. Now we're going to pass in our inputs. And I think we just have two inputs. Um, let's what are the two inputs? We need basically we need what and what's for our constructor. We need the token address and the admin address. So let's get the token address first. To get it, we deployed our token earlier, so we could just check it out. This is our token, right? Let me confirm. Yeah, it is. So we are going to get our token contract address. After getting that, so not here. We're going to paste it here. The second thing is the admin address. The admin address is this guy here. The guy who has the token, so we're just... Okay. Sorry, my mark has started again. I I just don't want to shut it down yet. So probably by weekend. Okay. Why is the extension refusing to open? So let's copy the address and um, let's paste it here. Now let's de try deploying the contracts. Yep, so um, let's copy the contract address and um, it shouldn't show by now. So let's just wait a bit. Yeah, it 
So, uh, like I said earlier, you can still attempt the assignment and still try submitting. Your submission will still be checked and marked. But please do not copy and paste. I want to see that you really understand this stuff. So don't copy and paste. And don't try to copy and paste and try to edit small stuff. Um, anyhow you try to do it, I'll definitely know because it's my code. So just try, try to do it yourself. Yeah, I'll stop this up now. So we're going to move over to our rights contract. Now, before we write, um, before we register, like I said, we need to approve this amount of it to be spent, right? So we are going to copy our contract address and we are going to head over to the official EAT contract address. I think I have it somewhere here. Now, this is the official EAT contract address, right? This. So, we are going to first of all connect our wallets. Now we are going to approve. We are going to approve this our contract address. Okay, let me confirm that is it. Yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is. I want to approve that guy to spend this amount. Now let's let's approve that transaction. Okay, so um let's wait a while for that transaction to go through. Is there any approving we would need to do again? Yeah, there's one more approving we would need to do. Is there? Yep, we would need to also need to also need to approve our contract address. Because over here, if you check down, we also try to transfer transfer from the admin address to whatever address. So we are, we would need to approve. We need to approve. Um, we're going to head over to our token contract, which I just cleared. Or oh, is it here? Yeah, here's our token. It's not here. So, um, okay. So let's just try registering first. Let's try registering. We'll do that later. So we're going to connect our wallets. We're going to try registering. And hopefully we don't run into errors. Yeah, we don't run into errors. So we're going to try registering. While we wait for that to go, let's just load up. Um, let's load up our token address. Um, I hope I remember it. Okay, I added it somewhere. That should be this guy. Yeah, so so we're going to just write contracts, connect to wallet, urgent X. I want to approve our contract address, which is this. I want to approve that guy there to spend. Okay, let's just approve him to spend. Um, we were saying he'll be dispersing 20 tokens. Let's just approve him to spend 200 tokens from whatever we have. Well, let's just make it 500. Now let's write. Um, and let's approve. Okay. While we wait for that stuff to go through, the reason why we have to do that now is because if you try claiming, if you try claiming, you try claiming the tokens. Yeah. While well, that is not completed, it will run into errors. Mm. But if we don't run into errors, means that the contract has already gone through. So um basically we are we we'll try claiming the tokens, right? And I made a little mistake. I should have claimed from another wallet because we are using the same wallet that holds the tokens, right? So basically there will be no change in the supply of the token. There'll be no change in supply of the coin. There will still be no change in the in the its number of its because we just added and subtracted and add, sorry, we subtracted and added back. Okay, sorry, there's going to there's supposed to be a sub decrease because we subtracted from this guy into the pre-sale contract. Why I I didn't track the 
number of eats we had earlier. So, but I believe it should have um, subtracted. So, but if we go back to query the balance, right? Um, it's, it's here. Now let's go to the read contract and try to read the balance of, we shouldn't see much change except maybe, okay. We shouldn't see changes in this though. Now let's try querying. As you can see, it still has 10,000 tokens because we, we just basically subtracted from his balance and added back to his balance. So um, that's about it. But you can actually deploy it and try playing around by yourself. This is 655. You know, I've tried one other wallet. But if we have any questions, please ask because we're running out of time. Do we have any questions? Okay, I can't hear from oh, anybody. Probably after we go through the video. And, uh, all maybe. right, all right, all right. Sure, um, if you go through the video, uh, you still will have questions. Do you have oh, any questions? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi, good, good afternoon. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I don't speak much English. Uh, sure. The first two... Uh, the first two... The first two classes were good for me, and I want to uh, solve solve uh, task three, but I'm not sure how to refer to the Open Zeppelin libraries. Uh, I know that you have to import the ERC20 uh, library, the Open Zeppelin, but you also have to copy the correct e ERC25 from GitHub, uh, library Cairo 2. Okay, and yeah, I, I think I get your question. Um, that you are probably asking how you can get um, Open Zeppelin's Cairo contracts into your, your, your um, workspace, right? Into your folder and then probably import the library from there. That's your question, right? Yes, yes, it's correct. So okay, let's just let's just go through that. Initially, I, I decided to avoid that initially because I didn't want it to take so much time. But um what's going to happen is we're going to create a new folder. So let's let's move out of week two. Let's just move out of week two. Sorry, let's move out of week two and let's just create um let's just call this um imports, seed imports, sorry, protestar in it. I just want to show us how you can um, install dependencies using um, Protostar. So let's call this imports, or let's call this dependency, dependency. Yeah, so we're going to cd into dependency. And let's open this in our code editor too. Okay. So while we open that, okay, if you open, sorry, not here. If you open that, you will just see the dependency folder here, which comes always like source test, protostar, automail, and the rest. The next thing I want to do now is protostar has a command. So we're just go, go inside the water protostar docs, um, protostar, the protostar docs, uh, doc, 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 docs, okay, yeah. Let's head over to Protestar Docs and um, go to dependencies. Get a, um, you can see how to install a Protestar dependency. For, for example, Cairo, um, Open Zeppelin Cairo contract version 0.4.0. You can import it by using this command here. So basically, you just need to copy that and um, paste it in your terminal. And once you run that, you'll see installing Cairo contracts, right? And um, by the time you are done with that, you should have your dependency installed. So as you can see, if you want to update your Cairo path configuration, your configuration files, okay, sure, installed successfully. Now, if you go back into your code, you can see a new lib file has been created with the Cairo contracts. 
inside here is source of Zeppelin, inside is source of Zeppelin, you have it to come, inside it you have the years 20, then inside here you can find the library file you want to update. Um, Manolo, does that answer your question? Hello, Manolo, are you there? Yes, hello. Uh, see, is the question in the in the chat? Oh, wait, I wasn't sharing my screen. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to be sharing my screen. So I would have to repeat this again. Okay, no problem. So let's just um let me just start start sharing now. I forgot to share my screen. I'm so sorry about that. So can you see my screens now? My screen now. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I see. Yeah. Okay. So I was doing some stuff. I'm just going to repeat that. So I'm going to CD and I'm going to just remove what I did initially. Let's just remove the dependence before that. Now, um, let's just clear this. I started with um creating a new protostar file. So I want to show us how to install dependencies using protostar. And I started initializing a new protostar file and um. No, yeah, I call this dependency, dependency. Yeah, so um, basically, if you open it here, you can see we have this, right? You can see it's just, it just comes normally with the whole empty protostar um, framework. So now I want to, we want to CD into that dependency, right? And now I want to install um, protostar, once it's all protostar. Now, if you go to protostar docs, the official protostar docs, right? Um, if you go to the official protostar docs, um, go to tutorials, go to dependencies, and you would see there's a command here for this, um, a command for installing a dependency. So basically, protostar does dependency, use does dependency management using um git modules, right? Use it does it using git modules. So we are going to copy this command for installing open zeppelin skyro version 0.4.0. We're going to copy that and we are going to head over to our terminal and we're going to paste that command. And once we paste that command, we should see executing install, installing Cairo contracts. And once that is completed, a new folder called lib should be automatically included for us. Yeah, it has installed successfully. So as you can see here. We have a new folder, lib automatically created for us. Inside it, we have the Cairo contract from Open Zeppelin. And inside there, you can find the source, Open Zeppelin. Inside here, you can find the token, the RS20. And here's the library, not Cairo, that we actually used. So this is how you can actually install dependency. There's one more thing you need to do when you install a dependency. Especially if you are using from Cairo version 0.8.0 upward, you need to come over here and add the Cairo parts. And specify the Cairo parts to be equal to lib. That's how we tell Protostar to search that particular folder for um, um, potential dependencies you must have installed. And that way you can now create, probably create a new file, whatever it is, ERC20, ERC20.cairo. And you can import stuffs, percentage, long, stack net. From stackware.cairo.common.cairo buildings, buildings, import hash building. We can also import some open Zeppelin from, we can follow this library. So just from Cairo contracts, from, sorry, from Cairo contracts, um, dot source, dot um, open Zeppelin. Zeppelin dot um token dot erc20 dot library. We can then import um the erc20 namespace from there. So basically, once we do this, we can we can just add this to our. Let's try adding this. Let's see if this works. Erc20. We can just add source slash um erc20. ERC20.Cairo. ERC and let's see this guy up and um, let's try building to see if this works. And if try building, well, we run it to errors. 
um basically it couldn't find some stuff you can just find the right parts to do stuff and correct them because um over here if you go to the library file inside the library file some installations here as you can see here does not match the right file part we had earlier so to correct this we can just come here and add all this all the all the stuff we added earlier so we need to specify tell protestar right that you need to get you some Cairo contract that source before you can find the open zeppelin that's where you find the open zeppelin better still we can just extract the open zeppelin library into the library folder directly so um doing that we should have that corrected yeah so that's just basically how to install dependencies essentially open zeppelin um open zeppelin and any other dependency available on github using protestar does that answer your question manolo yes this is what i need thank you yeah, you're welcome. Um, I does any other person have a question? We're running out of time. Uh, we're only six minutes behind. Edu. All right. So, in the absence of questions, I want to believe we at least understood one or two things. We picked up one or two things today. So, I would just encourage you. There was a lot done today. Just try, if you can, just try to rewatch this video and try to attempt the assignment on your own. Just try to attempt the assignment on your own, and um, I'm definitely sure we can. We can do this. We can. Um, we can build this ourselves from scratch and that's basically how you just learn you we will not we we'll probably not be able to like give you everything we will probably not be able to give you everything during the course of seven weeks since seven weeks is too short to learn something as complex as Cairo but the whole idea is to give you a basic foundation you can actually build upon and thank you so much guys for coming around and I think this is where we call it the um over to you Paul yeah um thanks thanks for the class again i mean it's actually awesome and um i guess for the remaining assignments we have um we'll still like do one more of this follow-up class to run it up okay so um um we're looking forward to see you all on sunday the same time we have alex from Starkway join the class and and all so we're looking forward to see everyone on Sunday. So thank you for joining and do have a good night rest. Good night. Yeah.